This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. Member for Raikost, Kesi Sawang sworn in as Minister for Labor and Immigration. WASH program continues for the Southern Region. And Telecom Limited officially launch its July promotions. Good evening, this is National MTV News. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. The Department of National Planning and Monitoring through its WASH program, with the support of WaterAid, has been undertaking workshop trainings to districts and provinces around the country to promote and implement the National WASH Monitoring System. A four-day workshop is currently underway for the Southern Region at the Catholic Bishop Conference in Port Moresby. Uh, no, no. National WASH program coordinator Takele Tuna says the training aims to enhance the skills and knowledge of southern regional district and provincial administrators, planners and officers to be equipped with the necessary tools and techniques of conducting a comprehensive WASH baseline survey. Uh, the training is about uh, getting them to have an end sound. Uh, approach to basically collecting data uh, from the LND ward level all the way up to the district and provinces to form the district plan. So. The rollout of the workshop is in line with the National WASH Policy 2015 to 2030 Strategy Number 3, which aims to promote and implement the WASH policy to all districts and provinces. If you look at the WASH policy, there are seven strategies, and one of them is developing a management information system. So it's not only about uh, data, it's more than that. It's an information system, so basically that, 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 that information that we gather will help uh, uh, the districts and provinces to develop their five-year wash plans. Some of the challenges identified in implementing the WASH program is on the lack of human resources, no proper data provided to establish projects and funding. However, Mr. Tuna said now that they have been running workshops, more support and participation has been seen. It's new breathing, for example, they formed the committees now and they actually committed nearly two million kina for WASH. 500,000 for each of the four districts. So that's what this this kind of training actually, you know, the, the, the district administrators and the governor's people and so on, so on, political and district, they saw how effective this, this uh, system is and how easy it is. It doesn't cost anything. Department of National Planning and Monitoring and Water Aid have already conducted training in the Momasa region and the New Guinea Island region. They are hoping that more partners and developing partners come on board to help push the WASH program forward in all districts and provinces in the country. The Southern Region Workshop started today and will end on Thursday, the 6th of July, 2023. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Partnership is very important in all levels to see the successful implementation of the WASH policy 2015 to 2030. This was highlighted by a representative from ISIPIC's PHA WASH program during the Southern Region WASH, WASH workshop today in Port Moresby. Winnie Sagiu was giving the WIWEC experience of the WASH program being implemented in the district by the Department of National Planning and Monitoring with the support of Water Aid. Ms. Sagiu highlighted that throughout the rollout of the program, there has been greater need for partnership and collaboration in the district, provinces, NGOs, and developing partners. Let the government to drive, take lead in delivering the wash, and uh, our development partners or NGOs be at the back supporting us. The government to take lead. I think that's a message here. So when government take lead, we make it our priority to put money or funding for wash. The 
as NGOs, they come and go. Government, we are here to stay, so we should take leave. The challenges being identified so far is that there is not enough funding and clear guidelines to implement the projects. Just resources, manpower and all that is it's a great challenge. Uh, at the district level, it's very limited to be staffy. And for me, as one district environmental health officer, it's also challenging doing so many things. Energy officers and energy managers have the work to do also, apart from most. So it's quite challenging as well. From the experience, she noted that there should be greater collaboration with implementing partners and stakeholders to successfully roll out the programs in all districts and provinces in the country. Cynthia Maku, National MTV News. Papua New Guinea's 100% nationally owned telecommunications company, Telecom Limited, has officially announced its juicy July promotion that commences today and will run through for the entire month. This promotion will see over 250,000 kina being given away in cash and prizes. Juicy July promotion. This promotion is open to telecom customers from all four regions in the country and is applicable to mobile and fixed users. General Manager Corporate Services for Telecom Limited, Silas Matoli, explains the dynamics of Telecom's Juicy July promotion. The promotion is quite simple. Uh, uh, you recharge uh, five kina or more and you enter into the draw. Uh, there's going to be more information and the details of it in, in all the flyers and in our advertisements. Please, or even you can visit our website and our Facebook page, our Twitter and LinkedIn to uh, get all of the uh, details of the promotions. Uh, but otherwise, uh, to all our customers, uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, uh, please subscribe and buy five kina or more, not less than uh, five kina, but start from five kina and you can uh, earn a portion of this uh, 250,000 that's on over. 1,000 kina will be given to 16 daily lucky winners per region. 3,000 kina will be given to four weekly lucky winners per region. 30,000 kina will be given to one lucky winner as the major cash prize per region. Head of subsidiaries for Telecom Limited, Kevin Malai, further elaborated on customers' eligibility to participate. All you have to do is join the network, be part of it, and you will win it. You have to win it, you have to be in it. That's all. Mr. Matoli explained that winners will be verified, ensuring the telecom number they use is registered under their name. This promotion is timely as Telecom Limited hopes parents can maximize this opportunity during this school holiday to win and use these funds to lessen financial responsibilities like school fees. Amanda Ilaitia, National MTV News. The people of the Lower Kagul LLG in Tambul Nebilia district of Western Highlands province have been urged to take care of the public services delivered to them. Tambul Nebilia District Development Authority CEO Philip Tap Talpa made the call recently during the opening of a double classroom funded by the National Fisheries Authority. The students and parents of Bonga 1 and 2 Council Ward were told that the district government must not be expected to assist them in all sectors at once due to commitments and responsibilities of other LLGs as well. We may have 23 councillors, council wards, but Bonga 1 is up. We may have 19 and 10 wards, but we have 19 and 10 wards. We have 15 and 10 wards, but we have 15 and 10 wards. We have 15 and 10 wards, but we have 22 and 10 wards. No one is there. So people are close to 99 council votes from Tabul and Bia. Mr. Talpa said that the pressure to deliver equal services to the people of Tambul Nebilia was there given the limited resources and election petition cases against their current MP, Windaki. The call on the people is to take care of government assets and to appreciate support from donor agencies and other stakeholders like NFA. We have a school student now, 110,000 population, 99 or 7,000 people inside of the Tambul Nebilia's house. 
He also added that one of the lower Kagol people's need is road upgrade, which has been noted by the DDA, given the fact that the new Bonga Community Health Post will also be opened next month. It was highlighted that road upgrade to Bonga is needed in order to assist public servants, patients, students and the general population in that area of the electorate. Lindy Suharupa, National NTV News. Member for RICOST and Vice Minister for International Trade and Investment, Kesi Sawang, was officially sworn in as the new Minister for Labour and Immigration today at the Government House. Present to witness the swearing-in was Prime Minister James Marape, his wife Lady Rachel Marape, Senior State Minister Soroy Eowe, Mining Minister Anu Pala and the Minister for International Trade, Richard Maru. Minister Sawang becomes the first female politician in the Marape Rosso government to hold a ministerial portfolio. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. 23 farmers returned to PNG yesterday following a month-long tropical agriculture crop training in China. The training was fully funded by the government of China in a private partnership with the former Ungai Bena MP Benny Allen when he was then agriculture minister. Since 2004, the Chinese Academy of Tropical Sciences has organized more than 100 international trainings sponsored by international organizations, Chinese ministries, Department of Chinese Governments, which has benefited more than 4,000 participants from some 99 countries. This group of 23 adds to that number, and although tired and jet-lagged, they were eager to share their experiences from the month-long training. The man who was responsible for their travel, Benny Allen, he spoke of how the private partnership began. And those guys still wanted to invest in Papua New Guinea and also want farmers from Papua New Guinea to go to China to learn um, the farming techniques and you know, everything in China, but all about farming. So um, some of those farmers uh, uh, contacted me and Willie and we arranged uh, on a short notice for these farmers from Western Highlands, Jiwaka, Eastern Highlands and Central to go. Two women were also part of the farmer's contingent. The woman known as the Honey Lady in Goroka spoke of the tropical crops they worked with. The tropical crops were coconut, cocoa, rubber, uh, cassava, food crops, like cassava, vegetables and also floriculture. Apart from that, we learn a lot from the village setting, how Chinese people live off their land. Participant John Cole, who is well versed in public service delivery, having spent years working in the public service, highlighted that the government needs to adopt or look into what China is doing as a replica model for PNG. If they do a, we, we do a project in our country, then they'll, they'll come with the technology. Uh, technologies like transfer of uh, know-how and uh, training on on job training is very very vital. You see, so our farmers can you know as a business factory for example, if we do a factory in here like cassava, then you know the, from that you know practically we can learn and we can expand. Another participant, Akitawo, said the experience was an eye opener and called on the government to do more in the agriculture space for the subsistent farmer in the rural areas of PNG. I see is that the government is not going down to the people in the villages. There's no government support in the villages. To alleviate poverty, you must start with the people in the village. So if there's food on the table for a family, then there's no poverty stops there. Team leader of the 23 contingent and first secretary to oil palm minister Francis Maneke, Mr. William Mel sent, summed up this successful tour. Firstly, I want to thank uh, my minister. Uh, Honorable uh, Francis Maneke to release me uh, to take these farmers uh, with me to China for a month. 
And I also acknowledge the uh, Acting Secretary for Agriculture, uh, Dr. Simbiken, uh, and uh, my officers. We, had it made, we made it clear, and I'll give a copy of our presentation. The 23 farmers that were selected were from Central, Jiwaka, Western and Eastern Highlands Province. The knowledge and skills they have received from the China trip will enable them to teach other farmers in their rural areas. Rocky Iso, National, MTV News. An Indonesian regular commercial flight, CityLink, landed its maiden flight in Port Moresby yesterday at around 11 a.m. The flight formally opened CityLink's regular international route, connecting the beautiful island of Bali and Indonesia and Port Moresby twice weekly. In 2013, the government of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia signed an air service agreement that paved the way for the two nations' commercial airlines to operate between destinations in the two countries. Thereafter, Air New Guinea opened routes once a week from Port Moresby to Bali. The routes were unfortunately ceased in 2018 due to operational considerations, and ever since, the embassy has made countless efforts to reopen the routes. Since February 2020, CityLink has started to initiate direct flight connections. And yesterday, the first direct flight of CityLink found its spot in Port Moresby. <laughs> On board with the flight was CityLink Chief Executive Officer and staffs, officials of CASA PNG, Indonesian nationals and the advanced team for the Indonesian President's state visit. To formalize the ties between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, an inaugural flight ceremony of CityLink was held yesterday at the Jacksons International Airport at around 11.15 a.m. The ceremony was attended by the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia for Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands, Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, Secretary of the Department of Transport, the Indonesian Consul in Vanua, CEO of CityLink, CEO of CASA PNG and Acting Chief of state protocol of Papua New Guinea and some other government officials of both countries. By having a CityLink direct flight, it's good for us, so we may have stronger connections between government to government, people to people and business to business, said the Ambassador of Indonesia, Mr. Adriana Supandi in his opening remarks at the ceremony. The CityLink direct flight from Indonesia to Papua New Guinea will also be launched during the state visit of the President of the Republic of Indonesia on the 5th of July 2023 at the APEC House. The launching will be a part of the program as well as one of the deliverables that is going to be announced to the public by the President and the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. Rocky Iso, National MTV News. Over 1,000 women from across the country are here in Port Moresby for the 10th National Women's Conference for the Christian Brethren Churches of PNG. Today was the opening day, which saw an organized march by the women representing each province in the country. The march started this morning at Terima, where these enthusiastic mothers with their flags and play cards proclaiming a positive message of love and hope. With the team, challenges women face today or Karai belong all Mary in Tokpisin, this women's convention is a significant event held every three years to equip women with necessary knowledge through workshops and other projects and presentations. This was alluded to by Pastor Gina Kello. Plenty of mama, blom, 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 all different, different provinces, all come, all come, no survive, no, you through hard work, blom, all. So, me, blom, thing, was, and this, like, and talk, blom, encourage him, all, push him, all, go more yet. Okay, faith, blom, all, Jesus, a big blessing, thing, now, physically, and spiritually, to blom, one must balance. Most of the participants to this national conference are mothers from some of the most rural parts of the country and first time too in the big city. They have their own testimonies to tell. I cannot express them on behalf of others that may be this, but when you really uh, interview everybody, they will tell you how they feel about it. The main objective of the conference is to address challenges faced by the women folk in their daily lives through a biblical approach. This is a five day and night event and will be held at the Bomana CIS College. It ends on Friday with a feast to farewell these mothers back to their respective provinces. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. 
More than 200 mothers from Hela province have also arrived in Port Moresby for this women's conference. There, there are mothers from the Christian Brethren Churches of PNG and the Evangelical Brotherhood Churches. These are women from Hela province. A total of 275 of them arrived over the weekend to attend the 10th National Women's Conference of the Christian Brethren Church. Their spokeswoman, Josie Pakuali, from Koroba District, elaborated on how they arrived in Port Mosby. So, me blow got them come on 25 June, la Mandhaken, Friday, Saturday, me blow stop la happy, Sunday, First run at 50, me bla like am na me bla go lo. Ya bot lo kakamuk. Ta sol balus and pull up. Na PNC Bible Church too like am na all mama too all pull up. So me bla no got well lo come inside. So me bla sit down outside na me bla sing him song. She added that with the frequent lawlessness back in the province, they are always seeking divine intervention. Me bla Papa God, so I give him strong love. Me bla na me bla na sa losing fellowship. Bla me bla every Friday me bla sa run fellowship fight to sa come up. That's all me bla sa still holy Jesus na me bla sa pray. They return to Tari after the conference ends this weekend and are adamant they will be agents of change, love, peace and hope in their respective villages. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 2 0.2800 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0.2725 US dollars, 0.4062 Australian dollars, 0.2432 Euro, 38.96 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed lower, cocoa closed higher, copra closed higher, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher, and copper closed higher. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher, and the All Ordinaries is trading higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. Moving to overseas news now, French President Emmanuel Macron is holding crisis talks in response to days of violence and unrest after the killing of a teenager by police. Yet again, there is a very heavy police presence here in central Paris. Police vans and officers line the Champs-Élysées braced and ready in case any violent scenes break out. It is feeling less tense than it has on nights past. There are still tourists out and about enjoying this summer evening. Yet again, tens of thousands of officers have been deployed across the country to try and quash any violence or riots or protests that might break out. There is a feeling amongst authorities that things could be dying down and while they expect sporadic violence around the country, they don't expect some of the huge scenes that they have seen in nights past. Now, here in this city, in Paris, there are still people coming to terms with what has happened throughout these riots. French prosecutors say they will try and find people who rammed a car that was on fire into a local mayor's house and then threw fireworks at his wife and children as they tried to escape. They said that they will be trying to prosecute for the charge of attempted murder. Now, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, is meeting with his top ministers trying to find a crisis plan moving forward. But this is the test. The feeling is still quite tense as people brace and see what this night holds. The Ukrainian authorities have said that their air defense have destroyed Russian missiles in Kyiv. 
Three cruise missiles and eight drones were shot down. Kyiv was among the targets for the first time in nearly two weeks and one person was hurt when falling debris sparked a fire. The Ukrainian government says Russian troops are advancing in some eastern areas. It's not often that Ukraine makes reference to Russian advances, but the deputy defence minister says Moscow's forces were moving forward near the city of Donetsk, as well as two towns further north. But the government says Ukrainian forces are advancing in some southern areas, particularly around the shattered city of Bakhmut. Ukraine's counteroffensive is continuing to be slowed by deeply entrenched Russian defences. A police hunt is underway in the U.S. city of Baltimore after a mass shooting that left two people dead and 28 others injured. The victims were attending a block party in the Brooklyn neighbourhood when the shooting took place in the early hours of Sunday morning. An 18-year-old woman and a 20-year-old man have died, while three others remain in a critical condition. Authorities say there was more than one shooter. I want those who are responsible to hear me, hear me very clearly. We will not stop until we find you, and we will find you. Until then, I hope with every single breath that you take, that you think about the lives that you took, and you think about the lives that you impacted here tonight. We're also asking that anyone that knows anyone, anything about what happened here, anything about this mass shooting, to come forward with any piece of information. Treat this as if it were your family and how you would want people to treat it if you were mourning, if this was your neighborhood, if this was an event in your community. Much of Queensland is bracing for a wet start of the week as the town of Mount Isa receives a record rainfall for the month of July. A huge rain band is making its way across Queensland this week. It was in the Northern Territory last week with places like Catherine and Tennant Creek recording low temperatures and rainfall. This huge rain band has created so much heavy rain that Mount Isa in Queensland's northwest almost doubled its daily rainfall record. It recorded 110 millimetres of rain on Sunday and it had some unseasonably cool temperatures. A week ago, parts of outback Queensland was breaking records for its maximum heat temperatures. In fact, Mount Isa recorded multiple days in a row that were over 30 degrees. But yesterday it reached just a top of 10 degrees. Now there is some warnings for flash flooding, but that's mainly across floodways and roads with no issue to houses, uh, but this rain band will be moving across the state today towards the east coast and Townsville, where it's set to sit for the rest of the week. Indonesian President Joko Widodo is expected to arrive in Australia to spark new business partnerships between Australia and Indonesia. Joko Widodo will fly into Sydney on Monday night. He'll meet Prime Minister Anthony Albanese on Tuesday. And to a large degree, this visit will be about business. He's hoping to encourage Australian companies to invest more in Indonesia. This has not been an easy country for Australian businesses to operate in. It's an economic relationship many believe is rather underwhelming. Indonesia is not even a top 10 country for either imports or exports. But Joko Widodo is hoping that electric vehicles can provide a boost. He has very ambitious plans for Indonesia to build its own batteries and eventually its own electric vehicles. Both countries have the critical minerals needed, but Indonesia lacks lithium. Australia has a lot of it. So expect to hear some sort of discussion about how Australian lithium can play a larger role in Indonesia's electric vehicle ambitions. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. 
The PNG Olympic Committee has expressed its sincere condolences on behalf of Team PNG and its member national federations on the untimely passing of Se Costas Constantino. The committee, while extending its deepest sympathies to the family of the late Se Costas during his bereaved time, also reflects back on the life of Se Costas and acknowledged his positive contribution to sports development. In expressing his sympathies, President Se John Dawanikura acknowledged his contribution to sport in Papua New Guinea, especially the role he played in ensuring the success of the 2015 Pacific Games as chairman of the 2015 Pacific Games Authority from 2012 to 2016. Se Costas is a prominent business figure in Papua New Guinea, also held a number of high-level public sector and private sector appointments. Round 12 of the National Rugby League competition ended on a high note for top teams competing in the competition. Two current teams leading the competition are Enga Miox in Pool A and Agma Krabal Gurias in Pool B. Following round 12 matches over the weekend, the National Rugby League competition has about five weeks remaining before it completes its regular round of the season. Having started its round 12 competitions on Saturday and completing its matches on Sunday, the score stands at Moroks with 32 points, defeating the Mount Hagen Eagles, four points at full time, the Goroka Lahanis trailing with 10 points after being defeated by the Enga Miox with 22 points. Lace Snakes Tigers proving dominant over the Kimbe Cutters at full time with 30 points to 18. While newcomers, the Sipic Prides dominated the match against their opponent, the Agmak Rabal Gurias, with 36 points to 26, and the NCDC Port Mosby Vipers successfully outstood the Central Dabaris at the National Football Stadium with 24 points to 10, and Croton Hella Wigman trashing the Gulf Isos with 22 points to 8. Currently, the ladder stands at in Pool A in top three, Enga Miox are leading, followed by Lace Necks Tigers and Miox in the third sport, while Groka Lahanis are sitting on the fourth sport, followed by Kimbe Cutters in fifth and Mount Hagen Eagles in the sixth sport. In Pool B, Gurias are leading the top six teams, with Wigmen in second sport, followed by Central Dabaris in third, Vipers sitting on the fourth sport, followed by Sipic Pride in the fifth, and Gulf Isos in the sixth port. The National Rugby League competition will play its round 13 matches this coming weekend in their respective venues around the country starting this Saturday, 8th of July. Drukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Drukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports now. In AFL, Josh Kelly has kicked a monster winning goal, putting the Giants back into the finals race again in their match against the Melbourne Demons yesterday. They held on for a 7 5 47 to 5 15 45 point victory, which puts them just four points outside the eight and leaves the Demons spot inside the top four vulnerable. In the other matches of the day, West Coast fell just short of pulling off the upset of the season, coughing up a 31 point lead on the way to an eight point loss to St Kilda in front of over 35,000 fans in the West. Earlier, the Blues routed the Hawks by 60 points at the MCG, keeping their finals hopes alive. Although star defender Jacob Wiedering faces a nervous wait, he was reported for striking. In cricket, Australia won an action-packed second Ashes test at the Lord's Cricket Ground against England by 43 runs yesterday. He appeared fired up after the controversial stumping of teammate Johnny Bairstow. Bairstow had made 10 when he left his crease following a delivery from, from Cameron Green and wicketkeeper Alex Kerry threw down the stumps. With Bairstow out of his ground, the Australians celebrated and then Bairstow and Stokes looked bemused but Australia refused to withdraw the appeal and the right-hander trudged off to the loud boos coming from around the ground. Stokes eventually skied a catch to wicketkeeper Alex Kerry and Australia's fast bowlers wrapped up England last three wickets to seal the win. Australian tennis star Nick Kyrgios has withdrawn from Wimbledon due to a wrist injury. 
A scan of his wrist in the lead up to the tournament revealed a torn ligament and he's admitted there isn't enough time to manage it effectively. Kyrgios has only played one tournament this year because of a knee injury that needed surgery. He was set to face Belgian David Goffin in his opening match. Former player Louise Fleming says it's a disappointing loss for the tournament. Really sad for all the, the fans. Um, yeah, it's a really sad situation for him, but that knee is just not holding up. He he pulled out of the event last week just to try to prepare. Uh, I spoke to Stefanos just last week, his brother, and he thought that, you know, everything was going to be okay, but coming down, getting closer and closer, it just it wasn't 100%. That ends Trukai Sports, the Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Moresby, brief inland showers. Daru mostly fine. Kerima possible brief showers. Alatau and Popondeta partly cloudy with few showers. In Dabomase region, Medeng mostly fine. Lei and Wiwek partly cloudy. Vanimo cloudy periods with few showers. And in the New Guinea Islands region, all centers, few showers. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, possible brief showers, Mendi and Wabeg, possible brief showers, Goroka and Kundiawa, partly cloudy. Waters of Southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerama to Port Moresby to Hood Point to Samurai Island seas 1 to 2 meters. Waters of Samurai Islands to Eastern and Western Milin Bay Islands to Cape Vogel seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters north of Cape Vogel to Ewan Gulf to Finchafen seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Finchafen through Vitiers Dampier Straits to CSC and Long Island seas 2 to 3 meters. Waters of Long Island to Medang to Bogia to Wiwek to Vanimo and Northern PNG Indonesian border seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of New Britain to New Island seas 1 to 2 meters and waters of Bougainville seas 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Taking a look at the ocean forecast, Coral Sea seas moderate to rather rough, east to southeast winds of 15 to 25 knots. Solomon Sea seas moderate to rather rough, southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. Prismark Sea seas rather rough, becoming very rough over southern sector, southeast winds of 15 to 25 knots. And Pacific Ocean seas light to moderate, becoming rather rough over southern sector, east to southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Monday, the 3rd of July, 2023. From all of us here, have a safe weekend, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.